Good morning everyone, we are group 7 and today we will discuss the exercises number 16 and 17, the 6mm pig embryo and the 10mm pig embryo. The pig is suggested for embryological research because of larger capabilities may get the specimens of the embryos at sufficient early stages in huge numbers and with minimal difficulty or expense. So, let's first start to the exercise number 16, the 6mm, 5mm, 7.5mm pig embryo. To give you a brief information, the 4 to 6mm pig embryo is in the 18th day of gestation period or 96 hours, while the 5mm is at the 48 to 58 hours, then the 7.5mm is at the 18 to 19 days. These embryos and the young chicks previously observed have a fundamental resemblance. Hi, my name is Rainy Nicole David and I'm going to explain the 6mm pig embryo. As you can see, the head and body are bent in an equal curve. The dorsal line is convex and the tail is recurved strongly. There is an acute angle of cephalic flexure at the mesencephalon, as well as a significant cervical flexure. As a result, the head has a triangular form. The segments can be observed lateral to the dorsal line, becoming larger and more distinct near the head. The olfactory pit is marked by a slight indentation at the tip of the cranium. The ice lens vesicle is exposed to the exterior. Four brinkal arches separate three brinkal grooves along the sides of the head, caudal to the eyes. The fourth arc is partially hidden by a triangular dip. The cervical sinus, which is generated by a faster growing of the first and second arches. The first or mandibular arc divides ventrally into two parts, a smaller maxillary and a larger mandibular process. The latter has its own. The space between these processes indicates the position of the mouth. The lacrimal groove is the ridge that runs from eye to the mouth. The hyoid arc is separated from the mandibular arc by an ectodermal groove that continues as external acoustic meatus. The digestive and respiratory system lies between the mandible and the median frontal nasal process of the head and the maxillary processes at the side. The diverticulum of the epithelial hypophysis, or also known as the ratchet pouch, extends along the ventral wall of the forebrain. Near its distal end, the wall of the brain is thickened, and later, the posterior lobe of the hypophysis will develop at this point. Next one is a 5mm pig embryo. At this stage, specializations of the superficial tissues about the optic vesicles soon make the developing eye readily identifiable. With the establishment of the mouth parts, the ear, and the eye, there is no longer any difficulty in recognizing the general topography of the cephalic region. The trunk, like their invertebrate ancestors, all vertebrates have a segmentally organized body. In adult mammals, the underlying metamerism is largely masked by local fusions and cephalizations. But, even so, unmistakable evidences of the fundamental plan of structure persists in the segmentally arranged spinal nerves and ganglia. In the series of vertebrae constituting the backbone and in the arrangement of the ribs and the intercostal musculature. In the young mammalian embryo, metamerism is much more obvious. One of its most conspicuous superficial markings is the series of paired prominences which indicate the location of the mesodermic somites. The masses of mesodermal tissue are clearly metameric in arrangement. In fact, it is true to them that we trace the origin of the segmental arrangement of the acial skeleton and the thoracic musculature, just alluded to as one characteristic evidence of metamerism in adult mammalian anatomy. To help in the identification of parts of the 7.5 mm pig embryo, we will look by comparison with figure 2, which has explanatory labeling. 
The head is somewhat triangular in form, being broadest toward the front and narrowing posteriorly to join the rest of the body. The upper boundary of the head is a nearly straight line, the extent of which marks approximately the territory of the hindbrain. Towards the left, the outline forms a rounded curve which marks the territory of the midbrain and then continues obliquely downward in a straighter course until it curves over onto the underside where it forms three notches. The first notch indicates the position of the mouth. The second marks the boundary between the first and second branchial arches. The third, the boundary between the second and third arches. On the tip of the head, just in front of the mouth, is a shallow depression. The angle of the nasal pit and above is the small eye. From the eye to the mouth runs a shallow furrow, the lacrimal groove. The first bronchial arc is called the mandibular. It is broad and separated by a furrow from the second. Between it and the eye lies the maxillary process. The second bronchial arc is termed the hyoid. The third is smaller and somewhat drawn inward, while the fourth and fifth have sunken so far as to produce a deep pit with a triangular outline, which has been named the cervical sinus. The body has a long, curving dorsal outline terminating in the recurved tail. Near this outline, 37 segments show externity because each one creates a protuberance of the ectoderm. The least developed segments are in the tail. From there, toward the head, they show a progressive advance in the stage of development attained. The two limbs are rounded buds, the interior being the larger and offer no trace of their future articulation. Between them stretches a long protuberance, which is due to the Wolfian body or mesonephros, the precocious development of which is the characteristic of ungulates. Between the liver and the head is the very large heart. The division between its auricle above and its ventricle below can be seen clearly. The abdominal region of the body is prolonged outward between the tail and the heart and so forms the commencement of the umbilical cord, the end of which is marked by a thin membrane called the amnion, which has been almost completely removed. In life, the amnion forms a closed sac around the embryo and is distended by the amniotic fluid. From the end of the umbilical cord project remnants of the yolk sac and the allantois, both of which pass through the cord to join internal structures of the embryo. Recall that in early development, the brain is subdivisible into a fore, mid, and hind brain. The forebrain, or the prosencephalon, gives rise to the telencephalon and diencephalon. At the 8 mm stage, they are not always distinguishable. The myelencephalon may be distinguished by the relatively thicker epithelial walls, whereas the epithelial walls of the metencephalon have a fairly thin roof plate. The level of the liver. Here we can see number one, the common cardinal veins, number two, the left ventricle, number three, the foreleg bone, the number four, liver, and number five, the spinal cord. Here, the left umbilical vein divides into a dorsal and ventral portion inside the liver. Assuming a dorsocephalan course, the dorsal division sends a short, wide branch to a prominent sinusoid in the left lateral lobe. It communicates freely with the capillary sinusoids of the left lateral root and continues apalically as a small channel that terminates into the sinus venous. Near its blind caudal end, the left umbilical vein receives a branch, which is then received by the left lateral sinusoid, a prominent sinusoid in the left lateral lobe of the liver. Moving on to the level of the heart, here we can see number one, the body wall, number two, the ventricles, three, the posterior vena cava, the liver, number five, the descending aorta, number six, the long bod, and number seven, the foreleg bod. Here in the level of the heart, it is already recognized as a medial tubular organ that receives blood caudally from the common cardinal veins, also known as the sinuses, and it pumps cranially towards the aortic arches via the ventral aorta. Similar to a fish gills slit, the aortic arches transport blood dorsally up past the gill pouches before it travels caudally as the mean dorsal aortic. 
Depending on the area under consideration, the paired dorsal aorta will eventually fuse or degenerate. The heart may be the most noticeable organ in the 6 mm embryo, 6 to 8 mm embryo, possibly ahead of the large developing kidney. The ventricle, which is still not divided, is pushed slightly to the left as a result of the heart's rapid expansion at this stage. By being connected to the ventral aorta and aortic arches, the atrium continues to be cranially anchored. The atrium frequently starts to divide into right and left parts by the 6 to 8 mm stage. Now, let's proceed to the questions for research. What is the minor differences between the 6mm pig embryo and the 96 r cheek embryo? So, the 6mm pig embryo is in its early development, its early differentiation. Major organ system and germ layers would have begun to emerge. An embryo chick that has been growing for 96 hours is only about 4 days old as of conception. So, by this time, the embryo will have taken on a more identifiable shape with the beginning of formation of structures including the neural tube, somites, limb buds, and eye vesicles. In general, they differ from dimension, developmental progress, and development of organ. Let's now proceed with the discussion of exercise 17, which is about the 10mm pig embryo. The 10mm pig embryo is a developmental stage in the pig's gestation period. It is approximately 10mm or 0.4 inches in length and has a C-shaped body. The embryo's head is well developed with the eyes, nose, and mouth beginning to form. The limbs are also starting to develop but they are still very small. Internally, the 10mm pig embryo's heart has begun to divide into two chambers and the lungs are starting to form. The digestive system is also beginning to develop with the stomach and intestines starting to take shape. The 10mm pig embryo is a critical stage in development as it is during this time that the major organs and body systems begin to form. The embryo is also very sensitive to environmental factors such as exposure to toxins or radiation. The 10mm pig embryo is a valuable tool for studying mammalian development. It can be used to investigate the formation of the major organs and body systems, as well as the effects of environmental factors on development. Now, let us view the 10mm pig embryo at the level of mesencephalon and myelencephalon, which are two out of the five brain regions. The mesencephalon is a thick-walled section which is typically round in shape and contains the mesocele or the cerebral aqueduct, which leads into the fourth ventricle. It is at the point of the cranial flexure and is the original midbrain. It is bounded posteriorly by the tuberculum posterius and dorsally by the isthmus. Just posterior the isthmus, which is the constricted part here, we will see the myelencephalon. It is elongated and tapering toward the spinal cord having a roof of thin, non-nervous ependyma. Neuromere markings may still be seen ventrolaterally. The cavity of the entire hindbrain is the fourth ventricle or the myelocele. This slide shows the transverse section of the 10mm pig embryo at the level of the thyroid. First, you can observe the diencephalon. It is a part of the developing brain responsible for relaying sensory information and regulating various functions. Next, mouth. It is an opening through which food and air enter the digestive and respiratory systems. Next, ventral aorta. It is a major blood vessel in the embryo that carries oxygenated blood from the heart to the body. Next, pharynx. It is a tubular structure connecting to the mouth and the esophagus, serving both respiratory and digestive functions. Next, dorsal aorta. It is a principal blood vessel in the embryo that carries oxygenated blood away from the heart to various body regions. Next, maxillary process. It is an early structure contributing to the formation of the upper jaw and parts of the face. Lastly, Lens. 
It is a developing, transparent structure within the eye that focuses light onto the retina for vision. That's all for the discussion of the 10mm pig embryo. Thank you for listening.